Uh, Tom Cruschel, 1975 Jefferson team. Thanks for coming, Tom. Um, so tell me, what, what do you feel like when you walk into this gym? What are your memories, feelings? What is this, where does this take you? Uh, Friday nights, you know, the band playing, um, the cheerleaders doing their thing, <laughs> coming running out in our striped pants, like <laughs> the Indiana Hoosiers, except with blue on. <laughs> Um, our warm-up routine where we'd bounce it off the backboard and oh, the yeah. last guy would get to put it in and I always hung around near the back so I'd be the last guy so <laughs> it was fun it was uh, it was really cool really well, cool how about the crowds the student section they were right? huge I huge. mean yeah they had the band there every Friday night Tuesdays also um, it was an event in West Bloomington <laughs> so uh, you guys have a legendary uh, team in my mind uh, I know Coach Evans has said that uh, your senior year, that 74-75 season, was probably his most talented all-time team that he coached. Do you know that? Have you talked to him about that? I think he's just saying that because we didn't win the state championship. Okay, <laughs> he, you know, ever the diplomat, Coach Evans. But no, we were good. We had a lot of good players. We had a bunch of football guys mixed in, and yeah, we had lots of size for the mid 70s. You know. Um, and our guards were good. We had athletes, shooters. We had a great team. All right, I'm going to start throwing some stuff at you, and you just kind of take it where you want to go. Um, I, and I've said this before recently. Uh, from basically your senior year, 1975, to my senior year, 1987, it's a 12-year span of time, seven state tournament appearances for Jefferson uh, basketball team, playing in the toughest conference, toughest yep. section in the state, it's four state championships. You guys were consolation champs. You're in yep. 75. Good enough team, obviously, to win a state championship. I think 85, my sophomore year, was a team that we finished third in the state. That was a team that was good enough to win it all, too. Um, do you think there was an aura about Jefferson basketball that maybe really started with your senior year, 74, 75? You talk about that aura. Yeah, um, I think there was. And even before my senior year we had some really good teams I remember playing at Olson middle school and then running over here on Friday night to watch the varsity uh, we had guys like Dan Hoffman uh, Kurt Olson uh, clearly a team that could have went to the state tournament early on I think and um, um, you know all of us younger kids just wanted to be part of it wanted to be part of Jefferson basketball and uh, I always dreamed about playing in the state tournament. I grew up watching it when there was eight teams. And um, it was always a dream of mine. I worked you know, hard to be, to be part of something like that. And I was lucky to be on a, a, a great team with a great coach. And um, yeah, I mean, Jefferson kind of had a little bit of a swagger back, back then. And uh, it was great. It was great to be on the Jaguars. Um, talk about Dan Hoffman. Because uh, mm -hmm. he played on the first uh, 70, 70, 71, 71, 72, two years, first two years of the school. Uh, what kind of player was he? Uh, long distance shooter. I mean, he could cross half court and that thing might be going up. <laughs> and, um, you know, he had, uh, I think it was Craig Mariska was his running mate in the backcourt. It was a great backcourt and then they had um, good big men. But, but Hoffman was, um, he was a gunslinger. I mean, he just was fearless and um, it was just fun to watch him um, drill those deep shots. I don't know how many points he would have scored if they had had the uh, three-point line back then. But he was, uh, he was dangerous. He, he was very dangerous, yeah. Okay, uh, how about, what do you re remember about your practices? And, and it seems like one of the themes we've been hearing about through all these former Jefferson players is the preparation that Coach Evans and and, and Jeff have, have really done a good job of getting you ready to go, getting you ready yep. to play in practices. What are your memories of practice? Um, jumping over this bench that coach made us do, um, these bench jumps over and over. We were in great shape. I mean, uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, we, we would work on things that we were going to see on Friday or Tuesday night. I, we were always prepared. And that's a big advantage, obviously, in basketball, as you well know. How about the commitment to, uh, you know, with how things go and work and operate nowadays with coaches that certain coaches recruit and all the movement of yeah. open enrollment. Jefferson, for almost 50 years now, have won or lost with yeah. Jefferson kids and Bloomington kids and 
Talk about that commitment uh, of this program. Yeah, um, I think that's the way it should be. I know I'll be maybe criticized because, um, you know, AAU promotes some of the movement to high schools among the kids, but I think, you know, you're in a school district, unless you go to a private school, you should play where you, where you grow up. And, um, you know, we grew up in the summertime in a little, I don't know, five, six team league playing a dozen games with kids that we were in middle school with, elementary school with. I mean, that's just the way you did it. And uh, I wish we'd get back to that a little bit more. And your success, when, especially your senior year in 74, 75, uh, was it kind of expected, do you think? Uh, I mean, you had some good teams, like you said, with Dan Hoffman and those guys. But once you got to, to that last year of high school for you, um, were you expecting to have a you know, good season? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we had, a, we had a player, Tom Loris, who had started since he was a sophomore year, so he had plenty of experience. Um, we had Steve Lingenfelter, who no one had any idea he was going to be as good as he was because he started out as a point guard, you know, in middle right. school. Um, you know, our guards, Kevin Favre was a tremendous player, Greg Peterson, a tough-nosed player, Steve Winham, a great player. So we had all the pieces, so it wasn't a real surprise that we were good. I just think uh, um, we kind of gelled, um, you know, coach design stuff that fit our skill set so um, it just all came together and you know we were we were a pretty tough team by the end of the year talk about the about the consistency and the continuity of the program just you know how great it's been that you know over 50 years you're gonna have two head coaches yeah. here that's amazing yeah. and it's a father-son duo and that's still amazing to me um, as much turnover as there is and I coached at Edina High School uh, for a couple of years, we played Jefferson. You know, Jeff beat us pretty good right here. Um, but um, I just know the turnover in coaching and just to have two coaches at a high school uh, for as long as it's been open is, is just, it's mind boggling. It's almost unheard of. It, yeah, it is. I mean, unless you're Bob McDonald that coaches for what, 95 years, you know? Um, <laughs> you, you don't really get that. Yeah. How about, um the the I would assume like I was too young really to to enjoy your you guys as uh, your senior year, but the teamwork, the togetherness, the family feel mm -hmm. that many of the Jefferson teams have had was that kind of your experience? Uh, you guys were pretty tight, a tight group. Yeah, we were. Um, you know, we had a state runner-up football team, and um, we had probably not quite half of the kids came from the football team, so they were they were tight. Um, we had played together for years. We had a really good JV team leading up to this, so we were, you know, we were a tight knit, knit bunch. The I know the parents hung out together. Um, my parents were the head of the backcourt club, which was uh, kind of a big deal, and they would do things socially. So um, it, it was a big team effort, parents and kids. Well, let's go through your teammates. Like you kind of mentioned uh, yeah. the key ones. Um, I'll just kind of give you the, one of the names, and you just kind of uh, you know describe them as a player. So let's start with Tom Loris. Um, you didn't want to get near his elbows when he got a rebound because he would just clear out people. Um, started from his sophomore year on. Um, surprisingly good shooter um, for his big and and you know, sturdy as he was, but probably the best rebounder uh, that I've played with. And he was about 6'5". So, great rebounder. Big, strong. Yeah. He, he, he was a football player, right? Colorado oh. State, he committed to for football. Okay. Yeah. All right, Steve Lingenfelter. Yeah, he's up there with you in the banners. I mean, that's, he, I don't know if Kevin McHale will ever see this, but if he does, you know, he outplayed him two years in a row. Should have been Mr. Basketball, in my opinion. Not even, not even a discussion. Um, just kept getting better and better and better. And probably the reason that we did as well as we we did, we would have been good, but no one thought Lingenfelter was going to have the impact. Um, so he was kind of a surprise, huh? A little yeah, bit. I mean, he started to come on when he was a sophomore. Um, you could see it. 
but he hadn't grown to his full height. He, he just kind of sprouted up and, uh, and then, um, you know, kind of jumped in there. One of the interesting things was our football team had played in the state championship game, so they were, they didn't practice with us right away. So we put Lingenfelter and uh, Brett Knight and Bratlin and Hutchinson and those guys kind of in, in with us until the football guys came around. And then, you know, Lingenfelter never left the lineup. Knight started and he was a significant contributor, but when Greg, uh, Greg Peterson came back, you know, he moved out. So uh, Lingenfelter would have started anyway, but he got the benefit of the football team playing on and being with uh, the first team from the get-go. Right. Yeah. Uh, Steve Winham. Um, good all-around athlete, um, quarterback on the state runner-up team, all-star pitcher, um, you know, a 6'5 athletic guy, lefty, um, smart, leader, you know, just he, he ended up kind of being our sixth man and could have easily started, you know, pretty much anywhere else. So that's what kind of depth we had, too, when you had Steve Winham coming off the bench. Right. Yeah. Kevin Fauver. Um, athletic is as there is. I mean, the guy's, uh, he could jump out of the gym. Um, you know, he could shift directions. Uh, instantly, he he was uh, a, a good shooter. Um, just, I mean, super athletic. Just uh, had kind of the X factor out there. You know, he had some big guys. He had a rugged point guard, and then you had this guy that just could, you know, fly around the court. Well, that's a Jack Evans says he's one of the top athletes ever to come through the school. You would say, coach. And his his. Uh, his son is married to my daughter, so I know. I didn't know that. Uh, how about that? Really? Yeah, and they live in West Bloomington, so we're getting we're getting Jeff ready for uh, a crochet father. Hopefully, he can make the squad. <laughs> how about so you? Got to stick around for another fifteen years, Jeff. How about uh, Greg Peterson? Um, he was, you know, point a guard. tough point guard. Yep, um, you know, a clutch shooter when you needed it. Uh, really good defender. Um, kind of a quiet leader. Wasn't a real rah-rah guy, but you know, a guy that you could uh, count on. Um, just a really solid, you know, point guard. Didn't really care if he scored. You know, he wasn't about that. Um, just, you know, just a winner. Well, you guys are pretty tight knit group. I mean, uh, you kind of grew up playing together. I suppose Lingy was maybe uh, not in the group yet. But. Yeah, Lingy was uh, a year younger, um, but the rest of us kind of, you know, and we, we kind of played together because Loris was up with the varsity right away, right. and we were on the JV team. So Wynnum and Falver and, and Peterson and I, um, uh, and Pat Wacker a little bit too, um, you know, we, we came up through the uh, JV ranks together, sophomore ranks together. Um, and Favre and I played ever since we were in sixth grade. We played elementary and junior high together. So, um, yeah, yeah, we had, we we spent a lot of time on the court together. Uh, so you guys lost one one game in the regular season yeah. that year to Armstrong. What yeah. happened that night? Uh, our bus broke down, <laughs> and we had to take cars. Now that shouldn't be an excuse, but you know you get into a routine and. Right. Stuff happens. It, it's a game we should have won, but give them credit. They were ready to play, and, and we weren't. And, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. That was, that was a tough one. But you, you hammered a lot of teams that year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys were big and physical, and, and uh, yeah. so you obviously were winning games. You get, uh, talk about the Minneapolis North game in the sectional final. Yeah, they were the number one team in the state. We were number two. Um, we played them at the Met Sports Center. And... Um, they came right out of the uh, off the jump ball, and a, a kid hit about a 30-foot shot. And I said, "Oh wow, this is going to be a long game." But we just wore them out. Tom Loris drilled a couple of other guys with elbows, and <laughs> and um, their crowd went kind of nuts on us. But no one wanted to go in and get a rebound from that point forward. We just kind of controlled everything, yeah. and we just kind of ground them down like we did a lot of teams, and. Uh, and won, and it was great. I mean, you know, counting those seconds off and knowing you're going to play in the state tournament was, uh, you know, probably the highlight of my senior year. Coach, was that the first state tournament team? 
for in the right. in this for the school yeah. okay was was 75 ba boys basketball yeah right. okay so that was a big deal getting to the tournament for the first time yeah we had a big pep fest we got on the bus to go down to the Civic Center and they you know they had the band in the here conference yeah, First conference, yeah championship. We won the conference championship and yeah it was a big deal it was uh, um, my homeroom teacher was Fred Ehlers. I don't know if that name rings a bell, but uh, but Fred was uh, he was a hard nosed um, guy, but he was fair. And I came to homeroom about three minutes late with my luggage because coach said, "Bring your bags. We're leaving after the pep fest," and he put me in detention <laughs> the day that we were leaving for the state tournament. And he, Afterwards, after graduation, he pulled me aside and he goes, you know, I had to do that so I didn't show any favorite. If I would have showed favoritism, and I said, okay, I mean, I get it. That, yeah. Now, that's, that's, that's a guy who's consistent with his message. A guy going to the state tournament, he throws him in detention. So Did he has to come bail you out? Is that all no, the detention only lasted a couple hours, so as soon as the bus was ready to leave, you know, they sprung me, so... Um, <laughs> But but that's that's how you rolled back then. I mean, there was no fooling around.